we want to be able to now key on these buttons and put that data into the text box there. All of these buttons. And then when we're finished, clear it off and start again. And that's our goal. So let's go about doing that now. To achieve that goal, I create two functions. I'll go into detail on these in a moment. Just to let you know, this function is called CB. When you click on the button, data gets sent from that button to here and gets caught in this BS button stuff variable. Over here, I've defined the function called clear. This clears out the contents of the BD variable and clears out the text on the calculator itself. Huh. Let's see how this is all done. In order to do that, let's scooch on down to the button section. There we go. Now, we'll start with button number 7, and we'll work left to right. Go down a row, left to right, left to right. So, in the button section, button number 7, I put in an extra command here. Right after text equals 7 for button 7, comma, I put the following. Well, listen, uh, Mr. Calculator, when somebody clicks on button number 7, I want you to do this command. So he says to me, what command is that? I, I want you to do the command that's equal to, well, it's a lambda function I'm going to define here. Oh, okay, that's like an inline function that you can write all the code out right here. Yeah, that's right. Well, I'm going to make mine simple. Colon. Here it comes. I want you to call this function, Mr. CB, and pass him the number 7, because you are button number 7. That's all I want you to do. He says, okay, I'll do that. Oh, I missed a button 8. I need you to do the same thing. Right after text 8, I key this in. I've got a command for you to do whenever anybody clicks on button number 8. Oh, really? What do you want me to do? I want you to do this command. I want you to call the CB function and pass him the value 8. He says, okay, I'll do that. Not a problem. I, he passes 8 because he's button 8. What do you think button 9 is going to do? The same thing. Command equals the lambda function. And here's the contents of the lambda function. Call CB and pass it the number 9 because I'm button number 9. That's not bad at all. I can understand that. Now I go to the div button, the division button. That's this guy here. I got a command for you, Mr. Division Button. It's equal to the following. Somebody clicks on you, run this lambda function that I'm defining right here. Call the CB function, pass it this slash within single quotes. Or double quotes if you want. He says, okay, that sounds easy. Button number four. The command is do the lambda function that I defined here. Call CB, pass it a four. Button number five. Please do the same thing. The command I want you to do if they click on button number 5, run this lambda function that I define here. Call CB and pass it 5. Button number 6. Please do the same thing. The command I want you to do is execute this lambda function, which I define right here, which is call CB, pass at 6, your button 6. Multiplication button. The command I want you to Execute when they click on you is equal to do this lambda function. I define that here. Call CB. Pass him an asterisk within single quotes. Buttons number one, two, and three. Button number one? Yes. The command I want you to execute when they have the nerve to click on you is equal to the following. Could you please execute the lambda function I define right here? CB. And pass it to number one. He says, okay. Button number two, the command I want you to do is the lambda function I defined here. Call CV, pass it number two. Button number three, the command I want you to do is the lambda function I defined right here. Call CV, pass it to number three. And they all cry out with one voice. Okie dokie. They'll do it. Subtraction button. Command I want you to do is the lambda function I defined here. Call CB, pass it, then subtraction sign. All right, button number zero, same thing. Command I want you to do is the lambda function, which I define here. Call CB function, pass it a zero. 
decimal button. The command I want you to do is the lambda function I define here. Call CB, pass it a period, in quotes, of course. Add button. Command I want you to do is the lambda function I define here. Call CB, pass it a plus sign, within quotes, of course. Equal sign. The command I want you to do is... Huh, for now, uh, the lambda function pass C B an equal sign, but it's going to need a different function, and I'm going to do that in the next video. The last one. Is the clear button? Yes. When someone clicks on the clear button, in this case, in this calculator, it's the C button, I want you to do this. The lambda function that I define here says, okay, what do you want me to do? Call the clear function. Don't pass it anything. And that's it. They click on button 7. He sees, oh my goodness, this is a lambda function. I gotta call the CB function and pass him a number 7. So, we jump up here to the CB function. The number 7 is caught in this BS variable. CB stands for click on the button function. BS stands for button stuff. And now the number 7 is in BS. Now I declare global BD. What is BD? He stores and accumulates the received button data from all the buttons. All right, remember, BS has 7. BD is the storage guy. Mr. BD? Yes, you are now equal to the following. Really, what am I equal to? BD, whatever is in yourself now, plus the string equivalent of whatever is in BS. So they clicked on 7, and they did. The string version of 7 is now in BD. Now, jumps down here. Mr. TV, yes, I want you to take Mr. BD and set him into yourself. Okay, so now the TV variable has BD in it. So what? This is so what? Let's scooch on down. Remember that variable's name, TV. Remember before the very beginning, we took the string variable function and said, Mr. String Variable, I want you to assign your string variableness to Mr. TV over here so as to make him a string variable. And he says, OK, I'll do it. OK, that's fine. Then here's the killer. We went over to the text box and we called the entry function. We told it to put the text entry box into the root window with this font and then we took the TV variable and bonded it to the text variable. Whatever happens to TV happens to this guy, Mr. Text Variable. And this guy here is Mr. Text Variable. Whatever gets put into TV gets put into here. Ah, ha, ha. So now let's go back up here. So 7 got put in here. Then we took the string version of whatever was in there, 7, and we concatenated it with BD, which initially has nothing in it. So now BD has 7 in it. Now, Mr. TV, set the number, set the value BD into yourself. What is in TV? 7. Now who has the number 7 in his silly self? This guy. 7 goes in to here. And now we can see it. Now what happens? Well, but someone clicks on button 8. 8 gets put into BS. Jumps down here. And BS, which has 8, string version of it, is now here. So this 8 now gets concatenated with whatever is in BD. What's in BD now? 7. So 7 and an 8 is now reassigned to BD. The TV variable now sets the value in BD, 7, 8, into itself. And as a result, the text variable now says 7, 8. And that's how this works. Let's run the program now and see how well it does this. So now I click on 7, calls the CB function, and bingo. 7 goes into BS, which goes into BD, which is set into the TV variable, which is set into this text variable here.
Let's look at the clear function now. When they click on the clear button, the command that's executed will be the lambda function commands we defined here, which is to call KLR. All right, we do that. This is what happens in KLR. Global variable BD is declared. Okay, we're going to use this guy. BD is set to nothing. That's the guy who was accumulating all the received button data. We're going to set him equal to what? A blank. And then we're going to go to TV and set his silly self with the contents of BD, which is now a blank. TV becomes a blank, and that means our text variable will become a blank. This guy here becomes a blank. So, bada bing, bada bang, bada boom. The next and last program will deal with the equal sign. See you then. Bye-bye now.